uh, tells you how to work with the solver add-in and I started to follow this uh, tutorial and the guy in the video he uh, chose evolutionary method there were three methods so I chose evolutionary and they didn't find any solutions and I, then I chose uh, the simplex I think the first one and I just waited too long I tried this method but yeah yeah well let's see let's see how, uh, let's see how it goes here I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot and uh, let me share my screen okay uh, I hope you're all there um, I started to set this up a four by four magic square. And um, I, I told you to, uh, <clears throat> as we're doing the row sum and the column sum and whatever, to try 34, and uh, which is a solution. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, one of the questions that you might have is, are there more than one solution to the magic square problem? And uh, I'm not familiar with all the theory about it. Uh, there might be if you, uh, uh, especially if you increase the dimension of the array, uh, I think three by three only had one solution. Four by four, I don't know if it only has one solution or not. And if you increase the size, possibly, uh, you might introduce other solutions. So I'm I'm not familiar with the theory on it, but I just want to see if we can figure out how to solve it. Now, it's it's easier to find the numbers to put into the individual cells if we know what the solution is. Um, if we don't know what the solution is, it can be more of a challenge. And uh, so. Let me first. I I ask in the in the homework question uh, to to try two different ways, and you know, some of the people only tried one way. Some of the people did two different ways and succeeded. Uh, so if I don't succeed, maybe I'll go uh, pull up uh, somebody's homework who got it solved and um, and see how they did it. Right. So let's. Um, Let's go here. One of the things I did was I um, wrote out the uh, what we want to put in the in the solver window here. So I wrote some things out. So we have here's our F column. So we want to make these sums here all equal to these sums here. So this is our six, uh, our row number six here, and um, and then equal to these two right here. Now, altogether, let's see, let's see how many values do we need to find? We have got four, and four is eight. There are a total of ten different values here, and they all have to be equal. Um, and um, you know, for me, uh, going in, I mean, it's not even obvious that there will be any solution uh, to uh, to this problem. Uh, so let's uh, let's do the first way, which I think is the easier way, and that is if we already know that the answer is 34, uh, how might we find uh, the entries to go into the cells here? OK, so. The key on solving this particular problem in solver. Is to uh, is to use the right constraints. And uh, so let's look this the cells we want to determine the values for go from B2 all the way down here to E6. So B2 to, no, not E6, sorry. This is a column sum. B2 to E5. So we want 
all of these values to be different. We also want them to be integers. And um, so that's a constraint I want to add in. And then we're saying here that we want all these values here to be 34, all these values here to be 34, and these two values to be 34. So how do we enter that into the constraints? We set B2 here. Um, let's see. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's see. B6 to E6. B6 here. B6 to E6. We want all these values to be 34. That's this constraint. Um, B8 and B9 is this constraint right here. Those two values to be 34. And then F2 to F5, we want those two values to be 34. So let's try to set those into the solver and see what we get. Um, now the solver is in data. Okay, solver. Okay, now. What cell values are we uh, are we going to change here? And the cell values we're going to change are going to be from B2 to E5 here, right down here, B2 to E5. And that's what I have right here. So we want B2 to E5. B2 and put a dollar sign in front of everything here. So if I happen to move this, if I happen to move all these down to some different location, uh, this isn't going to change. So that's something I have to be aware of. Colon E5. So B2 to E5, we're going to change the values in those cells. Now, the constraint, I'm going to add a constraint. And I want to put um, B2 to E5, I want them all to be different. B2 to B5 equals, and then constraint. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay, already here. Let's see here. Let's see. Can somebody help me here? I'm trying to put the constraint in here and it's not liking it. Let me, let me just say this. Okay. Equals all different. So I add this in here. B2 to E5. I want them to be all different. OK, that adds that constraint. OK, I want to add now integer. I don't, I'm not sure up front if I need to make them integers, but I will do that. OK, add cell reference again, B2 to E5. I want them all to be integer there. 
add that. What is it? It's not liking. I I I always have problems with solver. Cell reference box is empty. Here's the cell reference. I'm not sure. Oh, look at that. That's what the problem is. And I want that B2, not 5. So here's B2 to E5. OK, there I have that constraint. Now I want these three. Add. I want B6 to E6 to be 34. Add that. I should. There. I don't know if that got added. Let me try it again. I hit add instead of OK. OK. There's B6 to E6 equals 34. OK. And that, let me add the next one, B8 to B9 to B34. Those are these two. B8 to B9 equal 34. And then one more constraint, F2 to F5, those are down here. Thirty four. OK, let's just check these. I want. B to E to five, I want them all different. B two to E five, I want them to be integer. Uh, B six to E six. Let's see, it looks like I might here. I have that down twice now. Actually, having it down twice doesn't hurt anything, but let me just delete that one. So B6 to E6 is 34, B8 to B9 is 34, F2 to F5 is 34. Okay, I think that's all right. Um, and I guess I'll, okay, make us, okay, I want them to be non negative values. Make unconstrained variables non negative. So let me just hit solve and find simplex. I'll pick simplex and hit solve. Okay, so it gave me an answer. Now, one thing to notice on this, we didn't do the diagonal sum here. I didn't put the formula in for diagonal sum. Let me put this in. Um, equals sum. I don't want zero equal. And the cells I want to sum are here, 
here, here, and here. I'll do there plus there plus there plus there. Hit return. Okay, so look at that. That isn't 34. And notice here the solutions aren't all different. Let's do this equal to 34. Uh, equals sum. And I want to go down here. I want to go B2 plus C3. plus D4 plus E5 hit return. OK, now let's pull up solver again. Let's see what happens when I hit solve now. Now it's still giving me these answers and they look at this. They all add up to 34, but they're not all different. So um, something isn't working right on this. Now, let's see before I, I, I jump into this one uh, anymore. Uh, can anybody see what I might be doing different? What I might be doing wrong here. Let me pull up my solver window here so you can look at this. I want B2 to E5 to all be different. Is that right? Yes. Uh, B2 to E5, I want them to be integer, and they certainly are integer. So this constraint doesn't seem to be satisfied right here. I want B6 to E6 here, B6 to E6 to equal 34. I mean, and all these constraints are satisfied, but I'm not getting the right answer because for some reason this one isn't satisfied. Maybe there's something wrong in how I have entered that constraint. And um, so I could try resetting that constraint, but I don't want to reset all. I just want to change this one constraint. Let me try this. There. So I want to do here to here. Let me try it again. B2 colon E6 I want them to be all different. Hey. All different constraint cell reference must include only variable cells. So that means, oh, what is, oh, you see that? I've got this included, I, and that can't be included. So I want B2, not to E6, but to E5. Maybe you can just click and hold shift. It's easier that way. So B2 to E5, all different. Let me try this now. So I'm still getting the wrong answer here. So, <clears throat> so anybody see what I'm doing wrong? Can anybody tell me what's going wrong with this?
For one thing, I noticed I spelled square wrong. I don't think that's the problem. Maybe you could try another model. You have simplex. Maybe you could try another one. Nonlinear or evolutionary. Yeah, I know. What's bothering me here actually is they're not all different. Okay. Now I know I know some of you got this right. So um in fact, man, most of you got this right. So let's see. I mean, you've got it right. Can you see what I'm doing wrong here? Maybe in the set of objective, we chose one of the formulas. For example, maybe row sum or column sum. I did like that. In the objective, you want me to you want me to put like. Uh, F2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I've solved this without doing that. So, this will be something new. There, let's try this. Oh, I'm still getting the wrong answer. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see what's wrong with this. I mean, I've done it right before, and for some reason it's coming up now, and it's not imposing the all different um, solution here. Let me try this. Let me go back in the solver. I mean, let me delete this right here. And there's it's deleted. Now, I don't have that constraint in there at all. Now, if I solve, look at this, I'm getting 0 and 34. Well, I mean, except for the fact that they're not all different, uh, that's the right solution. Now, let me, um, let me add the constraint here again. So I want to add B2 to B5. You can just use shift without writing it down. Just press oh, on B2 it, and shift. Oh, OK, well, let me try that. Hold shift and go to E5. Did you hold shift? Yeah. OK, so yeah, it should work now. OK, we're still getting that. Well, let me try. Let me do that. Notice that. Um, let me try this with all of these and see if that makes a difference, right? So I want, um, let me just, okay, I delete those. Now I want to add another constraint. And this constraint, I want to make um, all these cells here be 34. So I click there. Click here and type 34. OK. There's that right there. Let me add another one. 
want to click here. In my file, I did the same, but it didn't solve anything. Thirty four. Here, let me go back and look at these. F2 to F5. Here's F2 to F5 down here, so that's that one. B6 to E6. Set that 34. So let me keep going. I want to make these equal to 34 here. So I'll add. Let me just double check here again. I have B6, E6. OK, so I still need to add these two. OK, I haven't added that they're integer. Let me try to solve. OK, well, I mean, OK, you see, I have a lot of the same problems that you guys have. And um, now I've, I've solved this before. And uh, so I'm a I'm a bit I'm a, at a bit of a puzzle as to why uh, that isn't working for me. Um, and. Um, now. Let's see already a half an hour is gone. Let me um, let me pull up here one of the solutions that you guys have that did work because I checked all your solutions um, and um, here let me see. Uh, homework September 27th. Graded. OK, so. So let me let me just pick one. Let's see, let's look at this one and see what it looks like. OK, here's a solution. OK, nice use of color here. It's set up very similar to what I set up here. This looks like it's the right answer. And. Um, let's see how data. Solver. OK, this was this was the second way of solving it. Let me go back to here. Okay, both of these actually look to be the same. Okay, no, that's not what I want. Close. Oh, close. You know, it doesn't like that there. Now close. Let me pick another one. Let me try this one. OK. Now that's one that doesn't have it. Here's week three. Now here's this here.
Let me see what the solver says. Okay. Looks very similar here. It, it looks, now there might be some detail that's off here. Notice, by the way, let me delete this here on my solution here that, um, let me close this for a time being. See, it doesn't like, if, I, if something gets in there, there, close, okay. Now, when I first ran this, I didn't have anything here. And um, Okay, I'm still getting a wrong answer. Okay, I looked at that one problem that someone turned in. It kind of looked to be the same as mine. Okay, here's a here's somebody else's solution. Actually, it looks almost exactly the same setup as mine here. And uh, let me look at this. Uh, I'm, I'm really getting tired of this, just like you guys get tired of trying to do the homework. Um, let's look at data, solver. OK. B2 to E5, all different. B2 to E5, integer. B6 to E6, 34, 34, 34. Uh, kind of looks to be the same as what I set up. Evolutionary, let's try simplex. And let's hit solve and see what happens. Well, it's solving and this looks right so i'm at a complete puzzle there must be some stupid mistake um in mine you know let me try something here you are trying to solve all uh, excel but his was evolutionary, yours is simplex. No, but I changed it to simplex. Yeah, that's why you got the same problem as you got in your worksheet. No, I didn't. I changed his to simplex and I got the right answers, didn't I? Solver. I now have it set to simplex. Right, can you read that or simplex right here? Yeah, simplex, but I thought I thought that there was an error just now. Let me run it. Yeah, here, what is this? Oh, okay, so it found. So it found a solution. It's so tiny, I didn't see it. Oh, sorry. Let me. Uh... There. So yeah, I solved his this using simplex, and uh, it came in right. Now let me. Okay. So when I run into problems, you know, I I just keep hammering it. So uh, I just hope I can solve it before the end of class. Um, let me uh, 
let me take yeah, you know, this is my solution right here. Well, let me just grab everything here. So I'm just going to grab everything. I'm going to delete, I delete it all. Now, let's just grab his here, here, the here, here to here. Let me copy it. Let me put it in here. There, OK. Now, maybe I have, you know, I think this was the mistake. Let me see. I don't know. I think I just put in 34, 34, 34, 34, 30 in mine everywhere and I didn't write the formula. I shouldn't have deleted it. Oh, well, let me just check here. Here, sum B2 to E5, okay. B3 to E3, B4 to E4, B4 to E4, there. B2 to E5, there, there, okay, there. Uh, let's see, this is the sum of the diagonal terms, sum of the diagonal terms. Okay, those formulas are correct. Um, let me just double check all of these again. Okay, all those formulas are correct. Now let's look at the solver. I, I think I didn't have the formulas in here. I'm trying to think back. When I set it up, I may just have written the numbers 34 in there. That may have caused something. Now let's look at these. Um, okay, I don't, you may not be able to see it, but this is B2 to E5 all different. B6 to E6 equal to 34. This is B8 to B9. Those are these two is equal to 34. And F2 to F5, which is down these all equal to 34, all different. And they're not set to be integer. Now I, I've run it simplex. Let me just add the constraint that they're all integer. See what happens when I do that, right? So this worked. Now I want to add one more constraint. I want to do here to here. And I want them to be integer. So B2 to E5, B2 to E5 right here all integer. Now let me try running it. Now it's giving me the wrong answer. OK, so that that integer, putting them all equal to integer may have uh, done something there. Now if I delete that, Now solve. Now I'm getting the wrong answer again. Pretty interesting. So I get the I get the right answer there and then the wrong answer. Now let's try. Um, evolutionary, which is what he had before. Now I'm not getting integers, look at that. Now, evolutionary can go run for a long time, but 
It looks like I have an answer. Oh my! Oh. Looks like I have an answer here. Okay. So, they, and uh, still running some things. Evolutionary can take a long time. Um, simplex shouldn't take that long of a time. So, what's different about this problem than traditional solver problems? Is we're not we don't have an objective function. We're not trying to minimize or maximize a value. And um, okay, so there it's finally reached a solution. Hit okay. So these numbers add to 34, right? This is 18 and 16, 34. Down here we have 19 and 15, 34. So this looks like it's an answer to the problem. But they're not different. The D column. Oh the yeah, column. right, 15, 15. Let's try that here. They're not all different. Oh, so yeah, so this is um, uh, a challenging problem and um, now, when I, when I saw this before, I wasn't running into that problem. Now let me see if I can find my previous solution. File, open recent. I don't think they're on here. Let me... Let me just search my whole hard drive. Solver yeah. favors only few, it seems. Um, well, the, this isn't the normal kind of problem that solvers solve. So let me, uh, which is why it was interesting to me. I wanted to see if we could solve a problem just by applying constraints. And uh, so I was doing a little experiment for myself. Let me search dot XLSX. I think this is the uh, identifier for all Excel. And I'm searching my hard drive here for all of my Excel uh, files. Let me go here. Oh, wow. I don't know if I'll be able to look through all of these. See, I have your, your homeworks on here. Solver example. Oh, this is another problem. Here's a magic square. Here's a three by three magic square. Oh, I think we all got the three by three magic square to work. Let me let me just look at this. Data solver all different integer fifteen. Want them all to be fifteen. Let me try running this and see what happens. OK, the three by three here worked. And I wonder if the four by four problem um, is uh, just beyond the capabilities of solver. You see, here's what's different about this problem. Let me pull this up again. 
set objective. Typically in solver, we're trying to find a minimum or maximum of some function. And we have, so we have, we'll have a formula. We'll have something in here with a formula. Here, let me, let me just put a formula in there just to uh, uh, see what happens there. Let me delete that for a moment. Let me put a formula in. I'm gonna put a formula in right here. I'm gonna put equals. And what I want to do is add up these three values. So I put equals this plus this. There, sorry. Yeah. This plus this plus this. So there's a formula, 45. Now typically in solver, we'll have something here that we want to maximize or minimize or do something with. So let me put that right here. So set objective. So I now have a function here and I want to maximize it. Now, this actually shouldn't change the answer um, because all the answers to this problem will have this as 15. As far as I know, this is 15 is the only value that allows us to find a magic square solution on three by three. I've never found a solution where the sums are anything different than 15. Now, let's solve this where I've added an objective where I want to maximize that value. So it's solving. It found it right away. OK, now let me do another one. Rather than maximize, I want to minimize. And let's see what happens. Found, found the answer right away. Now let me try something else. I do a value of. Now I can put a value of 45 and I bet it finds the right answer. Not 0, 0.45. Let me take out the leading zero. Okay. Now. Okay. I, I'm going to get really uh, tricky here. I'm going to give it a problem that has no solution. I'm going to say rather than have this equal 45, I want it to equal 40. So I want a value of 40. Now I'm saying I don't think there's any solution there. So I'm asking it to find a solution with these constraints where the sum of these values is 40 instead of 45. Look at this. There, it's given 40, but these are not integers. So it violated this constraint. So if we don't add the constraint of integers, it found that answer. Let me try set a simplex evolutionary. Evolutionary takes a long time. Now 
You'll notice all the evolutionary solutions that's applying the integer constraint. Now, from what we just did, it appears that there isn't an integer solution to that problem. So this could go on for a while. It won't find a solution. And um, at some point it'll stop and tell me it can't find a solution. Now, let me, uh, let me go back into my solver example. OK. Solver could not find a feasible solution. OK. OK, let me. Go in here. Let me remove that. Remove that. So you see here it's saying solver found an integer solution with tolerance within tolerance. All constraints are satisfied. So sometimes it will find a solution where all the constraints aren't satisfied. We've seen that. Um, in the 4 by 4 example, we kept getting a solution, but the constraint that they're all different integers wasn't satisfied. And um, that's a property of uh, a general property whenever we're solving optimization problems. There's no guarantee that there's a solution to the problem. And um, let me go back here. Let me just close. Some of these. So that is um, actually that was an unintended lesson. Sometimes we're trying to find solutions to problems that don't have solutions. Now, if you've taken other courses from me, you've actually heard me say that. And sometimes I'll say that to other people on the faculty when they're trying to solve a problem, even if it's not sort of a, a math kind of problem, right? It's not a chemistry problem or a physics problem. It's a people problem. And I'll tell them, not all problems have solutions. And uh, which is, of course, it was something I've learned doing this kind of stuff. And, um, and, uh, and I think you also realize that to be true, that not all problems have solutions. And that we could be trying to find, let's say, the maximum value of a function where there is no maximum value. For example, if I set, use the function y equals x squared. Well, there's no maximum value for that function. If I make x larger, y gets larger. I can make, I can keep making x larger and there's a new maximum value. Um, and uh, however, there is a minimum value. So if I was trying a minimum value of y equals x squared, the minimum value of that is zero. And so that is something that um, you need to 
be aware of all the time. You know, when you're going in and trying to find solutions to things, uh, sometimes there's not a solution. Now, I think there should be a solution on this magic square problem, this four by four. And like I said, I've solved it before. I should have kept that solution, I guess. And, um, and that's how, I, I mean, that's how I knew that 34 was a solution. Um, and, um, but it's not the typical kind of solver problem where we're trying to find a maximum value of something or a minimum value of something. So the techniques that solver uses to solve some of these problems, some of the techniques have difficulties. And this is why they're giving you different solution methods, why you have an option of simplex or this nonlinear technique or evolutionary and so on. Let's just, let me just pick one more here, nonlinear. In general, there, it just it didn't even change. It just recognized that this was a solution. Um, so it's because of all of these issues around finding solutions, finding optimum solutions to problems. You can take entire courses out of a math department or an engineering or, or physics department on optimization theory, where they'll go through which techniques work and what their flaws are. So um, now uh, I think I'm going to spend a, a little bit more time before next class next week uh, seeing um, uh, trying to find my old solver solution on the four by four problem and trying to identify um, what the difficulty is here on this. So I, uh, I apologize. I thought I had a solution to that problem that worked just fine. But apparently, uh, when you ran into problems doing it, uh, you proved me wrong. And, uh, and so I, uh, I didn't do that right. So with that, let me um, let me see if there are any final questions here. Let me go back into my camera view. OK. Um, any questions? Uh, and it, you should be uh, looking at that COVID uh, problem. And uh, I'm just looking for you to try something manipulating that data or other data, if that's what you want to do. A couple people have already suggested things that they might work on that do something uh, at, do something with additional data, and that's okay. Um, any any questions now? I'm going to go in and look a little bit more at that solver problem and uh, see if I can give you a better answer to it next week. Just disappointed with solver. Uh, yeah. But like I said, I I was asking solver to do something that it wasn't designed to do. Uh, and unfortunately, that's a bad habit that I have. Uh, trying to do something with something where what I'm trying to do wasn't an intended thing. So, uh, like I said, that's a that's a character flaw that I have. I'm always looking to do things that aren't normally done, um, like uh, professors dyeing their hair blue or something like that. So, um, okay, I'll look at that a little bit more, guys, and. Um, I uh, I hope um, the rest of your 
your your week until next week uh, works out well for you and stay safe, stay healthy. I'll uh, I'll talk to you then. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're bye. Right. bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thank nice you. day. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.